Bruce, I don't want to start too early, so let me know when you're up and running. Already did. You're good? Okay. December 14th. Uh, my name is Michelle Christman. I'm an independent hearing officer. And uh, today we are looking at Roslyn Stormwell Trust in care of Eric Stormwell Trustee uh, versus the City of Sioux Falls. And this is for a, um, looks like an ordinance violation. So just uh, procedurally, so you are Eric Stormwell, correct? Correct. Okay. And representing yourself? Correct. And Ryan Sage is representing the city here today. And so what will happen is that because the city has the burden of showing that you were in violation of the ordinance, then they will bring their uh, evidence first. You will have the opportunity to uh, ask their witness any questions. I would just ask that if you have questions that you keep your uh, questions in the form of a question. A lot of people try to give in their evidence and their statements when they're really supposed to be asking a question of, um, of the witness. And then you'll have the opportunity, when the city uh, is finished with all their evidence, you'll have the opportunity to call any witnesses that you may have and to put forth any evidence, additional evidence that you may have. Any questions? Not at this time. Okay. Um, you may proceed. Oh. I'm going to call one witness that asks that you swear him in, and then I'm not, if you guys aren't sure if you're going to testify, we can wait. If you would like to do that to be sworn in. Correct. <coughs> okay. okay. All right. Stand. Please. Okay. Do solemnly swear that the testimony you shall give relative to the matter now and here shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you guide. Yes. All right. You may be seated. The city would call Todd Reinhardt. Hey, Todd, would you please tell us your name and spell your last name? Todd Reinhardt, R H I N E H A R T. Todd, where are you currently employed, sir? Uh, city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. How long have you been employed in that position? Uh, current position, a little over 15 years. Your current position is with the health department? Correct. And what are your job duties? Uh, we do code enforcement, health inspections, and other jobs as assigned. Have those uh, been pretty consistent over the last 15 or so years? Yes. Uh, given that you're involved in code enforcement and health regulation, are you familiar with the code of ordinances of the city of Sioux Falls? Yes. Does Chapter 92 essentially govern uh, your nuisance cases and the uh, matter that we're here for today? Yes. I'm handing what's been marked as Exhibit 1. Uh, are you familiar with that exhibit? <coughs> yes, I am. What is Exhibit 1? Uh, it's the definitions of what the each violation will be. Break out of. Is that a fair and accurate copy of uh, Section 92.070 and 92.071 of the ordinances of the City of Sioux Falls? Yes, it is. At this time, I would offer Exhibit 1. Are there any objections? No objection. Exhibit 1 is received. Are you familiar with a uh, property that belongs to the uh, Stormo Trust on South 4th Avenue here in the city of Sioux Falls? Yes, sir. And how are you familiar with that property with respect to today? Uh, we had gotten a complaint about some nuisance violations at the property, and I went out to investigate them. <coughs> and I've handed you what's been marked as Exhibit 2. Are you familiar with that exhibit? Yeah, this is an overview <coughs> of that neighborhood. And would that show that that property is located here in the city limits of Sioux Falls? Yes. At this time, I would offer Exhibit 2. Are there any objections? No objection. Exhibit 2 is received. Do you recall about when uh, that first complaint came in? Uh, I would have gotten the complaint on July 16th of this year, 2018. Did you follow up on that complaint at that time? <coughs> yeah, I went out actually the next day on the 17th. 
And did you notice anything that uh, caused you concern with respect to a violation? Um, at that time, we had a couple of in our public vehicles with broken windows and a bunch of glass and stuff all over the ground. Did you then uh, follow up a little bit further on August 29th of 2018? Yeah, um, I had a couple conversations with Mary Starmo in the meantime, explaining what the violations were. Um, and then went back out on the 29th of August. Uh, the vehicle was still there that was inoperable. And did you take photographs at that time? Uh, yes, I did. And I've just handed you Exhibit 3. Uh, what is Exhibit 3? Uh, it's a picture of the inoperable vehicle that was at the house at that time. Are those, site, uh, those photographs fair and accurate depictions of the condition of the vehicle as you saw it on that date? Yes. At this time, I would offer Exhibit 3. Any objections? No objection. Um, I just, I didn't, okay. August 29th, that's the date? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Exhibit 3 is received. Did you follow up any further uh, with any written communication to uh, the Stormo family? Yes, we've gotten a letter from them, bought some clarification on what <coughs> was inoperable and what vehicles. So I resent the NOVs with the um, vehicle with the broken windshield on it. And I'm handing you what's been marked as exhibits four and five. Are you familiar with those two exhibits? Yes, these are the NOV letters that we send out. The first one on the 7th and of September, and then again on the 20th of September with more detail. I noticed that those uh, Notice of violations or those letters have different addresses on them. Can you explain why they were sent to different places? Um, the first one here was sent to the house of the 2300 South 4th Avenue, and the other one was sent to Mary Stormo at 800 South Summit, which is where they live. And I believe we did send letters to both addresses each time. So when you typically send out a a notice of violation that goes to multiple addresses yes. if they're listed in file? Yep, it usually goes to the house and then to wherever we have contact information for the owners of the house. Are exhibits four and five fair and accurate copies of the content of the uh, information that would have been sent to the Stormos? Yes. At this time I'd offer exhibits four and five. Any objections? <clears throat> No objection. Okay, exhibits four and five are received. <coughs> After those uh, notices were sent, did you continue to follow up on the property? <coughs> yes, I did. And uh, did you return back on October 9th of 2018? Uh, yes, I did. The one vehicle was still there that was unlicensed. I mean, I'm, hand sorry. I'm handing you what's been marked as exhibits six, seven, and eight. Uh, are you familiar with those exhibits? Yes, this is uh, pictures of the vehicles that were taken, of the inoperable vehicles taken on that day. Are those photographs that were taken by you? Yes. And do they fairly and accurately represent the, the condition of the vehicles in the property on that day? Yes. At this time, I would offer exhibits six, <coughs> seven, and eight. <coughs> Are there any objections? Did you then uh, return to the property again on October 16th of this year? Yes. Did you continue to uh, note the same violations? Um, on the October 16th, we had the two vehicles for the flat tires, the one with the flat tire and one with the broken front windshield. And did you uh, take photographs of those yes, vehicles? And then did you ultimately issue a citation to Eric Stormo based on uh, the continued violation? Yes, I did. I've handed you what's been marked as exhibits 9, 10, and 11. Uh, are you familiar with those exhibits? Yes, exhibit 9 is a copy of the citation that was issued. 10 and 11 are uh, pictures of the violations. <clears throat> with respect to exhibit 10, uh, can you please show up? Uh, actually, before I do that, let me offer exhibits 9, 10, and 11. Are there any objections? Okay. Exhibits 9, 10, and 11 I received. Mr. Reiner, <coughs> what I'd like you to do is walk me through Exhibit 10 with respect to those two photographs and, and explain to me what the violations of ordinance are that you observed. Uh, 
On Exhibit 10, the top picture is that's the overall pic view of the car. Um, the bottom picture is actually showing the violation of that car, which is the flat tires. And how about with respect to uh, Exhibit 11? Uh, Exhibit 11, again, the top picture is just the overview of the car, and the bottom is the picture showing the violation, which is the shattered covered windshield. Uh, and that property is located here in the city limits of Sioux Falls? Correct. I have no further questions for this witness. Do you have any questions for uh, Mr. Reinhardt? I do. <clears throat> you said that the property at 2300 South 4th Avenue is owned by a trust, is that correct? That's what our record showed, yes. And how many trustees did the property have? Uh, from what I can tell from <coughs> what our lady found, we just had the Roslyn Stormwell Trust. Um, we to believe it was Eric and Mary. Our secretary says those, finds those. Letters. <clears throat> so how did you de determine to notify Eric as opposed, for example, to Mary? Uh, these are other addresses that popped up in our system that were attached to that property. How did you determine <clears throat> to send a letter to, I think the first letter it looks like went to Mary Stormo at Cape Town South Summit. That's correct. We send letters to all the addresses that come up that are attached in our system to this property at 2300 South 4th Avenue. <clears throat> so, you sent a letter on September 7th to 2300 South 4th Avenue and a letter on September 20th to 800 South Summit Avenue. On September 7th, we sent a letter to 2300 South 4th Avenue. 2517 South Mary Knoll Drive, 800 South Summit Avenue, and the 2300 South 4th Avenue. And then on the 20th, <coughs> we sent them to the 2300 South 4th, 2517 South Mary Knoll, 800 South Summit Avenue, and 2300 <coughs> South 4th. So we send uh, the four addresses each time. So you didn't personally <coughs> verify that those were the trustees or the notification address to the trustees? Our secretary looks all that information up for us when we give her the complaints to write the draft the penalties. Can you point out to me in the ordinance where it says that the vehicle must have an intact windshield? Section 93.025, uh, inoperable vehicle definition is any vehicle which is not not in operating condition due to damage, removal, or inoperability of one or more of the tires and wheels, the engine, or other essential parts required for the operation of the vehicle or which does not have lawfully fixed thereto a valid state license or which constitutes an immune health, safety, or fire or travel hazard. So it's unclear to me which of those you're alleging is violated. Can you help me? Uh, this would be the operating condition due to damage, which is the front windshield, um, according to what our police verified with me before I sent the letters out, is all vehicles have to have at least two taillights in the back, four uh, tires, and a, a clear front windshield in order to be considered operable. To be considered legally roadworthy or to be considered operable? Operable, according to them. So, <clears throat> I guess I'm confused. Does the ordinance empower the police department to define operability? I guess so, I'm not sure <clears throat> <that's> <clears throat> Let me ask another question. Are you aware of any court ruling that says <clears throat> that 
the car has to be roadworthy to be operable. I am not legally, actually go by the definition. Legally roadworthy. Some answers. Again, just to be clear, you're, you're not aware of any court ruling or other finding other than a determination by the police department. I didn't object to this question because it's not under this witness's purview to testify about what a court ruling may or may not obtain. He's here to testify about this ordinance. It's the same. <clears throat> Were there any other complaints about these vehicles or this property prior to July 16th? I would not know at this time. I would have to go back <coughs> to the records in our system. If you don't know that, how could you testify that the first complaint was July 16th? You asked me if it was before that. I, the complaint I got was on July. But you said that was the first complaint. That I know of. Does, does the ordinance not allow a 14-day period to correct the violation? Yes, it does. So, let's see here. I see Exhibit 10 is labeled 10-16. Exhibit 11 is labeled 10-16. Six is labeled 10 9. So, how many days are in between 10 9 and 10 16? Which exhibits are we talking about? So that's exhibit that's 7. Print exhibit 11. <coughs> yeah, exhibit 7. And exhibit 10. Yes, that's two good examples. I don't think there's 14 days in between there. Picture of the exhibit eight and exhibit seven are the follow ups from the letter that went out 14 days prior. Um, at that point, we do a follow up. Our next step is to clear, verify everything with the our supervisor and then issue a citation. So there was 14 days prior from the letter to the exhibit seven, which is the first one. So, <clears throat> how does that? I'm, I'm confused how that illustrates that for that 14-day period, the tires weren't aired up. The 14-day period goes from the uh, Exhibit 5, which is the NLB letter sent to you, through Exhibit 7, which would be the uh, um, picture, the first set of pictures. Right, but, but that's not the question I'm asking. <clears throat> I'm asking, your conclusion is because you found successfully two days that there were flat tires, that there were no days in between where there were not flat tires. So on the day of the follow-up, there were violations on our property. But that doesn't prove that they existed for 14 days. How does it, that's what I don't understand. How does that prove that it existed for 14 days? I wouldn't, in the time frame that's allowed, I wouldn't know if they were up or down, so I do not go back until the compliance time is up. So the fact of the matter is they could have been in compliance and restarted the time period. I'm going to object. I don't believe that. I believe this witness has already testified that he can't testify of what the condition of the vehicle was between those dates. Sustained. Confusing to me. When was I notified was that flat tires were a problem? I believe that was on the September 20th letter. Sorry, I take that back. I 
I don't believe I actually ever put it in the subject line, but it does uh, state at the bottom of our letters um, any other items not <coughs> listed over the, uh, the actual wording here. Any additional news conditions not previously observed or as potentially may have been added to the property after the city's prior inspection must also be satisfied, satisfactorily addressed, which that is where that would fall because it does have the why we attach the ordinances to the property, um, to the NLVs, so for anything that might not be found for you guys to look at and be aware of. Is, is there a reason that you didn't, if these violations were so allegedly obvious that I could figure them out, is there a reason you didn't list them? They may have not been there the first day, or I missed it. Um, it still falls under the inoperable vehicles, which was <coughs> at that time. So, if you missed it, how could it have started the notice period? Objection, that's been asked to answer. <coughs> Sustained. I'll bring it to a five minute recess. Is that enough? Oh, sure. All right. You want me to pause the recording while you're out? It's your call. Are you gonna All right, we're back on record after about a two, two and a half minutes. It feels like a long so. <laughs> Okay. All right, so do you have any additional questions? Yeah, one last question. Um, are you aware of my federal lawsuit against the city? Personally, no. Okay. That should be my last question. Couple redirect questions. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt, does Ordinance 92071 uh, define an inoperable vehicle? Yes, it does. And it also references 93.025? Yes. Does that mention anything about tires? Uh, yes, it does. Does that state one or more tires and wheels? Correct. Being in a non-operable <coughs> condition? Correct. And that letter would have been sent out uh, well in advance of 14 days of the citation? Yes, this was attached to every notice of ordinance violation letter we send out. I have no further questions. <coughs> Direct. Okay. Do you have any confirmation that we've received any of these letters <coughs> that you allegedly sent? Um, yes, I had actually had a couple of conversations with uh, Mary Stormo on October. August 1st and again on August 8th and I also received a letter from you guys on September 19th and then one a little bit after that when you filed the appeal. Ninety-three point zero two five. question you just previously answered. I read this correctly, it says, which is not in operating condition due to damage, removal, or inoperability of one or more tires and wheels. Correct. So <coughs> your allegation is that a tire which has had the air let out of it is inoperable. Correct. So your essentially your allegation is that um, I'm subject to penalty due to the acts of a third party. Is that correct? I am, guess I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, I mean, I would think it's clear that this is vandalism, right? I would have no way of knowing if there's vandalism, a tree fall on it. I would have no clue. I just know it's a damage. Okay. Um, do you have any indication that the damage to the tire was 
permanent or anything other than having had the air let out of it? No. <coughs> City of rest. So this is your chance to testify, bring any um, evidence. So uh, if you are going to testify, then I'll ask you to stand and and uh, Mary, correct? Yes. Then I would ask both of you, if you think both of you are going to testify, then I would ask both of you to stand and raise your right hand and be sworn in. Um, I think only Mary needs to testify. Okay. <coughs> Ready? Yes. <coughs> <laughs> Are you aware of the uh, trust that owns 2300 South Fourth Avenue? Yes, I am. And how many trustees are there? I didn't ask that question. And that is? Yeah. And what's the trust address? Have you ever resided at 800 South Summit? No. Have you ever resided at 2300 South Fourth Avenue? No. Have you ever resided at 800 South? No. Okay. Are you aware of how? The damage to the cars occurred? They were vandalized. And when did the first vandalism occur? In September 2017. And what was that vandalism in relation to? Shortly after we settled with the city at federal case. Okay. And the cars, that was a small amount of vandalism. The second instance of vandalism was when? Okay. This year. Next instance? Fourth of July, this year. And then uh, there was further damage in August. And why was the August date? Uh, we finally cashed the check in the settlement. And then, and then we also tried to report the vandalism to the city to the police department. I called. They said, no, you have to do it by We, we attempted to report the July 4th vandalism, is that what you're saying? Right. And uh, when we couldn't do it online, they said you uh, do it by the phone. I then, we then went and did it online, and then we received notification that that wasn't the proper venue either. We then, after that, sent other letters to different parties asking how we should do it. And we have never, to this day, received an answer and how we should properly <coughs> I just didn't want properly um, report vandalism on the property. So, to your knowledge, each time the car was vandalized, essentially, or the major test was vandalized, it was In within days with of mm -hmm. us taking a significant action to settle or attach the checks relating to the federal lawsuit relating to the stolen construction equipment mm -hmm. or the construction equipment Correct. stolen by the employees of the city of Sioux Falls. Okay. Correct. Okay. During the period of time after we first had the contact with Mr. Reinhardt about the flat tires and um, receiving the citation, how many times would you estimate you would put air in the tires of the tornado? Uh, it was four, five times. Was there ever any indication that there was anything wrong with the tires on the car? Not at the time, other than they would hold air quite a while, and then towards the end, it was becoming less reliable. So, are they holding air today, to your mind? Oh, yes, uh, today they are. Uh, we took the tires and actually took them out. And uh, found out that the valves had been damaged on the tires, and then um, we had a tire machine which then we fixed them. Was the damage of a nature that was vandalism? I would say so. Yes.
Um, is there any evidence to your knowledge that that the cars are not drivable, that they can't move under their own power? No, I've actually seen the move and they can function just fine. To your knowledge, they were perfectly legal to drive, perfectly roadworthy, Correct. up until the times that they were vandalized. Correct. Up until the day we settled our case in the city, etc. And they're still operable in the sense that they do move under their own power. saying that we're sorry the following problem was found during review, you submitted report, this is not the appropriate method to of reporting this. And we have never received any documentation. And this is all dated uh, July 30th and July 31st. After repeated re request that we have not received any information on how to report vandalism at this time. And those requests as to the correct reporting method were addressed to who? To the mayor and to the police chief. And the second round, I think, was to the mayor and to the attorney's office. To the attorney's office? And I think it was to the uh, head attorney. That's true. I don't know how to say his last name. Koistra. Koistra, thank you. Can I just put it in the A in the bottom corner? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can have a label. provide you three copies. So you want to enter this as an exhibit? Yes, I do, please. Okay. Any objections? I don't think it's relevant, but for purposes of the hearing, I don't have any objections. I'll receive it. Are you aware that we we, <coughs> we got the letter from the city and we read through it and we scratched our head as to exactly what needed to be fixed? Is that correct? Correct. correct. And our response was to mail a letter to the city. Is that correct? Requesting information. I received that with a letter up as we've received before with no pictures. So at any time did we get the pictures that have been included in the exhibit? No. Yeah. Is that correct? We did did you get by never you mean I never saw any pictures that included with Mr. Reinhardt's letters. Okay. But you got them after we received the exhibit week. this correct. week. Okay. And that's the first I saw any pictures. Okay. So in response to the letter seeking clarification, you got no clarification. You got no explicit clarification. No, I did not. I was still scratching my head. To you, what does the word inoperable mean? Objection is not relevant. Yeah, I'm going to say that. <clears throat> Are you aware of 
other pending law enforcement complaints regarding this matter. Yes. closing so this is it's like a summary mr. sage will give a uh, I'm, I'm gonna call it a summary as to uh, why the citation should be upheld and you'll have the same opportunity to make your um, summary as to why the citation should not be upheld I think it's clear from the evidence that uh, mr. Storm is at least a trustee uh, with one of many uh, on that property that's at issue here today at 2300 South 4th Avenue. The first notifications of violations uh, were sent by at least uh, September 7th. As indicated by the <coughs> exhibits that have been submitted, at least 14 days passed before October 16th of 2018. Uh, to where exhibits 9, 10, and 11 uh, come from with respect to the uh, flat tires and the broken windshield, and I think under the ordinance. 92071 and 93025 that that does meet the definition and so I'd ask you to hold the citation. <coughs> okay, Mr. Stormy. I allege that the accusation is not sufficiently specific. I received the <coughs> citation and multiple communications in the mail. <coughs> the person of reasonable skill couldn't figure out what the violation was or what needed to be done to cure it. And in response to my request for more information, no further specificity was provided. I allege that none of the city's evidence shows that either vehicle was inoperable, nor does it show it was inoperable for the required period of time. I am unable to defend myself at this time because it may impair uh, federal and other law enforcement efforts that are pending. I'm not able to discuss details or theories which would further defend my position. As a consequence, I would request that this decision be delayed until those investigations are closed. I allege the method of choosing the hearing officer violates due process. It's well established by the Supreme Court that any method of choosing a hearing officer which allows one of the litigants to influence the decision, such as by declining further employment, is a due process violation. I allege the city's interpretation of the ordinance violates the separation of powers. The city council is the correct authority to de define this ordinance, and if they meant not roadworthy, they should have said not legally drivable on the public roads. They said inoperable, the vehicle's clearly last I knew. Operable, and the city's produced no evidence that it's not. And lastly, I believe the city comes to the tribunal with unclean hands, <coughs> and certainly in, there's significant precedence that um, in matters such as this, Intimidation such as vandalism and refusal to investigate it, intimidating witnesses, retaliating against witnesses, and the kind of behavior that's been exhibited in this matter is uh, the kind of behavior that should bar their ability to conduct a matter such as this before tribunal. I'm going to pull the citation um, in the letter that was sent to you that was attached. I mean, you said that you weren't clear in the communication um, as to what was um, what was being determined inoperable, and 
it, it says right here in the attachment to the letter that it included a broken front windshield. And the letter does also say that any additional nuisance violations that haven't been um, previously observed or potentially may have been added to the property after their prior inspection may have, must also be satisfactorily addressed via removal and or abatement. <coughs> um, <coughs> now, let's see, this, it was $100. And you do have the right to appeal this um, for judicial review. And I would ask if you would like to have findings, facts, and conclusions of law so that you may um, make that appeal. If you are not intending to appeal, I would ask if you would be able to waive those findings, facts, and conclusions of law. No, I plan to appeal. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do is make the citation due um, I'll make it due uh, January 15th, which will give you um, time to make the decision on whether to appeal. And you'll need to do that down at the, uh, the courthouse. Court. And, yes. Um, and then I'll issue findings back and conclusions of law. Now that comes by certified mail. Which address would you like me to, to have that delivered to? 2517 South Mary Noel Drive. 2517 South Mary Noel Drive. And what's the zip code there? 57105. And that's um, your address? That is my residential address. Okay. <coughs> and while we're handling some administrative matters, I don't think the hearing officer stated her name for the record. Did she? Okay. I apologize. Yeah, my name's Michelle Chrisman. It'll, it'll also be on the order. Of oh, I understand. So, oh, just, sure. Thank you.